Hey guys, Filthy Robot here, bringing you another guides, tips, and tricks video. This time asking me how good is the Arbalist? Um, quick disclaimer that I'm doing at the front of all of my Darkest Dungeon uh, character guide videos, and that is uh, where we're approaching these guide videos from. Uh, I am talking to you, giving you guys information as if you were playing on the hardest difficulty in Darkest Dungeon, which is both hard mode combined with no light. That's when the monsters are hitting the hardest, there's the most stress, it's the most difficult to obtain your objectives. And I'm doing this because anything that works on the hardest levels of play is also going to work on the easier levels of play. All right. So uh, let's talk about the Arbalist. If you go follow along with me on the bottom of the screen, right below the webcam, you'll see the individual stats of the Arbalist compared to the average stats of the heroes, other heroes in the game. Um, as, well, actually the average stats of all the heroes in the game, including the Arbalist, but anyways. Um, let's take a look at these. The Arbalist has fairly good HP, at 55 HP um, at her final level at level six, uh, compared to the average of 43.3. She comes in at lower dodge, uh, and I'm happy anytime you want to give me that. If you ask me, would you like lower dodge and more HP? Uh, in every scenario except for one scenario, I'm always going to say yes to that. Uh, I don't value dodge very highly for reasons we talked about the, in the Abomination video. And uh, uh, max HP is quite good for surviving uh, the nasty crit strings that occasionally happen to you from enemies. So uh, anytime we're going to trade off a fairly useless stat like dodge for a fairly valuable stat like max HP. I'm pretty happy with that. And additionally, um, there's a lot of items that give you minus dodge and they, the items will be weighted accordingly. In other words, they'll give you some nice positive stats and they'll have the negative downside of minus dodge. And I don't really give a fuck about minus dodge as a, as a negative stat most of the time. So most of the time, I'm extremely happy to get a very strong item like a Eldritch Slayer Ring that gives me 25% damage to Eldritch but only minus 8 dodge. I'm, I'm mostly happy with that, especially on characters that already have low dodge because I'm not trying to do something like stack dodge on them. So I quite like this trade-off. I quite like the low dodge, high HP trade-off on the Arbalist. She has speed 5. Speed 5 is quite slow. That means most of the enemies that you're really worried about going uh, are going to get their turns before she acts. Uh, these are going to be the stress casters in the back ranks, uh, the high damage, a lot of the high damage monsters are very fast, a lot of the bosses are going to get their actions in, etc. Um, 5 speed is not a particularly good speed at all. She comes in at 9.5 crits, uh, that's I think one of the highest crits in the game, it might be the second highest crit in the game, um, and uh, that's, that's okay. Uh, high crit should really be paired with high speed um, in, on, on a damage dealer, because what that, what that's what that's going to mean is that you shoot a target and a percentage of the time you crit that target and the target dies in one shot. Well, the Arbalist is slow enough that she rarely shoots the target by herself for the first time. She almost always is cleanup duty where she's shooting the target for the second or third time, which kills it, which means this, uh, this high crit chance is often wasted, right? Like a lot of the times uh, you'll shoot the target, the target's already at half, you crit it for 60 damage, but you only needed 15 damage to kill it or something like that, right? Which means that the 45 damage overkill really doesn't do a whole lot for you. Now on the flip side of that, crits are always good from the player's perspective uh, because crits are always gonna provide stress healing. Um, actually, there are times when crits are bad, but for the vast majority, when you crit, it's good uh, and because of the stress healing component of that. So uh, I can't complain about her 9.5 crit, but I would be happy to give up some of that crit for some more raw damage, which is the next statistic we're talking about. She has basically dead average raw damage, so she's not a particularly high damage dealer, but not a particularly low damage dealer either. Uh, and then has basically a little bit above average sun resist, fairly average blight resist, fairly average bleed resist, fairly average disease resist, a little bit above average move resist, fairly average debuff resist, and low trap disarm. Um, I have her characterized as red in terms of moves, but that might be a little bit uh, overly um, cautious in terms of that because she can move backwards too. And the Arbalist is only really useless when she gets shuffled to the front positions. And moving back two means even if you get uh, shuffled to position one, you can move to position three uh, on just one turn of shuffling. So that's okay. And most of the times with the Arbalist, you're not going to want to advance forward. So it's not such a big deal that you only have, uh, you cannot move forward at all. You have zero move forward on that. The only time it could be really bad is uh, if uh, you're trying to dance characters around to give yourself extended stress recovery or um, perhaps get a certain character in a certain position where it could be a little bit limiting. Um, but as a whole, her stats are decent stats. Not great, but decent. The biggest the biggest drawback to her stats, honestly, is the speed stat, that being so damn low. All right, let's talk about her role. Uh, the Arbalist is almost, pr almost entirely a damage dealer. She does have a heal ability that puts her as a secondary healer. Um, I mostly like to bring compositions that have 
quite a few secondary healers if I can, because that will allow me to get uh, in emergency situations that will let me get people off death's door. Uh, so she can do that. Uh, her bandage ability will allow her to heal, depending on her position and the target's position, you can't heal all the positions, because it only heals basically in front of her position, I believe. Uh, so it's okay. It's an okay healing ability. Uh, the buff element of that's not very, very, very useful most of the time, but uh, it will sometimes be a good emergency heal or more likely uh, be an extra recovery heal that you might get off once or twice in a round or something uh, while you're cleaning up that last monster at a slow pace in terms of recovering for the fight. Um, all right, let's talk through her skills. Um, she is the first of the characters, I'm recording these in alphabetical order. She's the first of the characters we're going to encounter that has the mark, uh, a marking ability. And she's got two ways to interact with marks. So marks are what should be a kind of cool mechanic and end up being a mechanic that is rarely used, which is too bad because they're neat. Uh, they come in two varieties. They come in a minus dodge variety and a minus protection variety. And uh, the way they work is they, uh, they tend to do, they don't do any damage. Uh, when you cast them on a monster, it gives the monster a mark and enemies that attack that marked target with specific abilities gain bonuses to those abilities. And then the mark also applies a debuff to the opponent. In this, in this case, it's minus dodge, uh, but in the other case, it's minus protection. So depending on who puts the mark on it, the mark will give the opponent either minus dodge or minus protection. Okay, here's the problem with mark. Um, debuffs in this game last for three actions, but they're three, it's not three rounds, it's three actions. It's three actions that the enemy takes. So on an enemy like a boss, that especially a boss that has multiple actions, and that's most of the bosses. Most of the bosses have at least two actions, and some of them now have three, and I think there's actually a four action boss, right? So most of the time that means, to, to if you think about it, you, what do you trade off giving to the mark? If you cast a mark, you trade it off taking a hit. Okay, well a hit does, just by default, a hit is 100% damage, right? So to gain back the damage you lost casting the mark, you need to either have enough of a damage increase that it's one for one. So in, in, in terms of the Arbalist, uh, at max level, her sniper shot will give her a plus 100% damage versus a mark target and plus 10% crit, which means that you, if, you shot her, if you shot the enemy twice with sniper shot, that would be the equivalent of shooting the enemy once with mark and once again with sniper shot, okay? So that means you need two rounds, first of all, to make it ever equal. And it gets a little bit worse than that because First of all, it's not actually plus 100% damage prior to level five. Second of all, uh, not all the abilities scale up quite as nicely as the Arbalist abilities does. Like the Bounty Hunters is not quite as high, the Houndmasters is not quite as high. So uh, in other words, they don't actually do plus 100% damage. So it's not the equivalent of taking two shots. It's only the equivalent of taking like one and a half shots. Um, the way that turn order works, since it's not uh, perfect, it's not um, perfectly predictable, there's a hidden modifier to the speed roll, means that sometimes you're planning on having a third action, but the enemy will go ahead of you, which means you miss one of your extra shots on it. And then additionally, the both the debuff element of the mark and the mark itself can be resisted. So the first thing you do when you cast a mark on a target is you roll a hit roll, and that caps out at 90% accuracy, which means you always have a 10% chance to fail. And the second thing you do, always have a minimum of 10% chance to fail, I should say. And the second thing you're gonna roll against is a resist roll, which means your opponent can be hit by your mark and resist it, can be, can miss, your mark can miss, and therefore it doesn't even get a chance to apply, and, or it can, it can go out of turn order and you're gonna miss one of your abilities. So really, the type of thing that mark is best versus is a target that doesn't go very many times per round, so you get as many rounds as possible to shoot at it uh, while it's still marked. Um, and doesn't have too little HP, because if it has too little HP, for example, if you're gonna kill it in two rounds or less, it's almost always better just to attack because then there's not that additional resist roll. So um, it can't have too much HP, it, or can't have too little HP rather, it can't have too many extra rounds, uh, and your character needs to always be able to attack it. So if your character has additional abilities like stress healing or something else, where some rounds you're not gonna wanna attack, it's almost always better to also shoot it. So marks get better the more of them you have in the group because then you're gonna have more people can take advantage of it. Uh, but again, the problems are pretty, there's, there's a lot of problems with using the mark. So all of that said, I think the Arbalist may be the best character for taking an advantage of a marked target. Her, her mark in of itself isn't particularly good. I prefer the minus uh, protection mark to the minus dodge mark. And uh, unlike a lot of the marks that can be cast from any position will hit any position, hers has limitations. So I don't think very much of Sniper's mark as a whole. 
but I do think quite a lot of Sniper's shot as a whole. It seems to be one of the best abilities to take advantage of a marked target. So things like Stress Ghouls, things like uh, Giants, things like uh, Swinatars, things like um, any of the new enemies, the, uh, the ones that were added to level five missions that only have a single round per turn, but are super, super nasty. Uh, a couple of the bosses that only have one action, like the Prophet, uh, or some of the bosses even that have two actions, those are situations in which you can take advantage of the of marks, and those can be really good because that extra crit percentage is really nice. The double damage means uh, that if you get more than one shot off with that mark target, you're actually coming ahead in terms of action economy, so then it can be good. But for most of the fights in the game, you're just going to find that it's not very, very useful. So, okay, that's that's the mark rant. We'll just do that once in the Arbalist, and then uh, we'll direct future uh, classes that use mark to come listen to the Arbalist rant to, to hear about it. It's the problem, really, with debuffs as a whole in this game. Which brings me to Suppressing Fire. Suppressing Fire, it's a debuff. It's an AoE debuff. It debuffs the back three ranks um, that gives the opponents minus accuracy and minus crit. Um, debuffs have the same problem that marks do. They have to hit first on accuracy and then they have to not be resisted, which means that they're a lot less uh, likely to do what they need to be doing or less likely to do what they tell you you're going to be doing. And these debuffs are not particularly good. The minus accuracy portion is almost meaningless at that small of a percentage accuracy debuff. It really isn't something that you can consistently rely on. The minus eight crit or um, probably more as it scales up, I think it might go as high as 10. That one is fairly interesting because sometimes when you're um, prolonging a fight by keeping two enemies alive, you're doing that so you can recover stress. And the biggest problem in that, that scenario is if they crit you a couple times. So having suppressing fire as an option would actually be kind of cool there because you could, you could debuff their crit percentage as your, uh, as your stress healing or, or health healing off of them while you alternate stuns or something like that, which would be pretty good. The problem is you can't really fit it into your... Uh, your order with the Arbalist. The Arbalist can only keep four abilities. Sniper Shot is her, of course, go-to ability. Uh, Blind Fire is extremely powerful. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, Battlefield Bandage is really something that you need in emergencies for uh, having another uh, other healing ability. And then it's a toss-up between Mark, which you kind of want to use with Sniper Shot, but at the same time, we've talked about the limitations of Sniper of Mark in particular. Um, Bola, which is really, really good more regularly than suppressing fire is and then suppressing fire itself so it's hard to fit that into your order but i could see it very rarely situationally being useful um bola i quite like uh, it is a aoe that does half damage but it hits two targets so it does the same damage as you would otherwise except it spreads it across two this is very good for last hitting things uh, and it's also quite good for last hitting things in the first position which you can't otherwise directly shoot um, i quite like it i use it a lot um, and then there's Blind Fire. Blind Fire is an amazing ability. Uh, it gives her a huge speed buff. Remember all the negatives I was talking about with having low speed on a damage dealer that hits the back ranks like the Arbalist? Well, this gets away from that. It gives you that plus speed buff. Um, the downside, of course, is that you took a shot on the first round that you couldn't choose where it went. Uh, and uh, yeah, and that's, that's problematic. And, and of course, it gets less damage as well as not taking any benefit from the mark. So if you have uh, like a Plague Doctor in the same group as the Arbalist, which is going to be pretty rare because that means you're probably not running a Vestal. Um, but if you run that composition, for example, having that first round of stuns off the Plague Doctor followed by a blind fire shot on the first round from the, uh, the Arbalist means that you can set up for the second round of very likely being uh, the first, of very likely acting before your opposition. I quite like blind fire. I use it a lot, but it's not the but it, it is a little bit clunky in terms of getting those those actions in the order you want. And that's basically my, my take on the Arbalist, honestly. This is exactly what I said there. I like them, but I find them a bit clunky for doing what I want. Like, they seem to be just on the the verge of being good at lots of different things with between the sniper shot and the mark plus the speed stuff. It's like right on the border. Um, they have very good camping skills. Um, I say that as I mouse over triage, which is not a very good camping skill. They have they have two themes in their, their, their camping skills. The first are... Uh, actual HP healing via camping, which is a terrible way to do HP healing. You don't want to spend your camping buffs on HP healing. It just almost always is the wrong decision. So field dressing and triage are both that type of thing and they're both very weak. Um, I almost never use either of those abilities. Um, her other two abilities though are very good. The first of these is marching plan, which gives all your, all your teammates uh, plus two speed for four battles. And that's awesome. Um, speed is a, probably the best attribute in the game and uh, your party as a whole getting faster is really good. The only downside of speed is if you get too, too much faster than your healer, 
uh, and then you might die to dots uh, in between when you get dotted and when your healer can act. Uh, but marching plan also buffs the healer, so it keeps all those those distances the same in terms of the disparities in speed. This is a great ability; it just makes you more likely to act ahead of your opponents, which is great. And then restring crossbow is really cool. Um, restring crossbow is damage, uh, ranged accuracy, ranged damage, and range crit, uh, which are all things that the arbalist can use. It does come with a minus two speed, which is kind of a big deal for an already slow character. Um, but you can burn that off using uh, herbs again. So if you uh, know that you're going to be using this buff, it's very much worth it to invest in some herbs for the arbalist and take this sweet damage buff to go along with that. Um, all right. Uh, any special restrictions with the Arbalist? Uh, not really. Um, she is. She does require pretty much position three, four. It's probably worth mentioning that. Uh, you're not going to want to run her anywhere else, but she's pretty much okay in both of those positions. Um, and overall, I'd give her probably an average rating. Um, not. It's the speed of what kills it, right? The fact she can project damage to the back ranks is great. Uh, her abilities are fairly good. She has nice redundancy in terms of being a secondary healer. She's got good camping skills. The downside is she's just not really fast enough, and that is a bit of a problem because it means that a lot of enemies are going to act before you get a chance to do what she actually needs to do. All right, guys, hopefully that was helpful. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you soon.